So like Laura said by way of Marnie, um, I'm going to be presenting my work from Germany. So it's slightly different in that this is a little bit more of a proof of concept project that I was able to complete in a really short amount of time. But it has a lot of ac applications to my, to my main work. So uh, yeah, we're just going to go with that. Uh, so in talking about uh, the way that cells experience their environment, there's this component called the mechanical microenvironment. And there's been several groups that have looked at um, how this affects cell behavior, whether you're talking about differentiation with uh, Dennis Disher and, and Angers, Angler's group, um, or you're talking about um, protein expression or proliferation or migration. Um, you have many different mechanical signals that are influencing cell behavior. And this uh, is also, or this can be described by not only substrate stiffness, but also exogenous strain that is applied to the cell. And that, these are examples of um, the differences in cell behavior due to their mechanical environment. <clears throat> the main focus of this project was to see if we can get um, these two components of the mechanical environment to, um, to not a, can we get their components? We, if we can get them to um, interact, and if there's a difference in cell behavior because of their interaction. Does that make sense? So substrate stiffness and the exogenous strain that's placed on cells, does that have um, an interaction and is that going to regulate cell behavior differently? So that's kind of the big picture um, concept of this project. Uh, the challenge was really just establishing this system. So there's a lot of groups that have tried to do it, and it's really difficult to get soft substrates to uh, to be able to, to deform them and strain them. And so um, I feel like I was kind of in the right place at the right time. They basically knew about 15 ways that didn't work. Uh, so we decided to try a simple way, and that's just taking PDMS at different ratios and casting it, them directly into a base and then cyclically straining that. So there was no gluing that took place. It was really just um, casting the gels directly into the base. And what we were able to come up with is a range of stiffnesses within um, 11 kilopascals all the way to 110. And uh, we tested that through the uh, determining what the shear modulus was with a rotational rheometer. And uh, significant for my work is within that range, you have the physiologically relevant stiffnesses of both healthy skeletal muscle and diseased aged uh, skeletal muscle. Because as you have disease progression, you have increasing in, um, stiffness. So I'm going to come back to that concept later when I talk about future application, uh, but just kind of keep that in mind. I have four different stiffnesses, and they're within the range of uh, skeletal muscle. So again, just a uh, really simple concept. All we're going to do is we're going to strain those different stiffnesses all at the same rate. So there's going to be an 8% deformation. And uh, at different time points, we kind of freeze the cells in time and see if the response is different. Um, at the different time points by stiffness. Assessing 60 cells per time point, and the response that I'm looking at, the mechanical response, is cells in response to the strain. This is well established from the work that uh, they have done at Max Planck, is specifically fibroblasts will reorient themselves 90 degrees perpendicular to this uniaxial strain. And that minimizes the amount of stress that those cells experience. So um, it's just a really simple marker of mechanical response. Uh, the hypothesis being that they're going to they're going to respond differently at the different time points on the different stiffnesses. Um, as far as analysis goes, uh, I I fixed the cells, I stained them with phalloidin to be able to uh, visualize their action stress fibers, uh, and then I looked at at the at kind of the macro level, the cell orientation itself, and then intracellularly uh, the orientation of the action stress fibers themselves. So kind of a macro to in internal um, measurement of reorientation. Uh, and one of the first, first things that we noticed is that um, this is what we expected, and other people have shown this. But on the different stiffnesses, you have different spreading of the cells. So the area of the cells, um, if you look at the red line for the, the stiffest substrate, um, 110 kilopascals, they spread out more and are, are in contact um, with greater area 
with the, stiff, with the substrate itself. So they potentially have greater capacity to sense the strain that they're experiencing because there's more focal adhesions and those focal adhesions are attached to this actin uh, cytoskeleton. And um, over time, that, that difference is maintained. And then this is, these are just uh, population level images, phase contrast of just what the cells look like, representative images. And again, the axis of strain is in the X, Y uh, direction. And if you look over time, um, there's pretty much randomness on the first two stiffnesses. Uh, they're, they're, I'm going to show you the graphical representation of this, but if you can see, there, there doesn't seem to be a preference for perpendicular to that X, Y direction. Uh, but if you look at the two stiffer uh, uh, su uh, substrates, sorry, uh, you can see at the later time points, you're starting to see that preference for 90 degrees, which is the cell response that I'm interested in. So this is just putting it into um, a quantitation. And that is over time, I know this is kind of a lot to take into, into um, t a lot to take in at this point, but uh, I thought it was really important to be able to see them contrasted uh, by time. So the lines are the different stiffnesses, and you can see over time, well, if we start at, at time zero at baseline, there's really no preference. Around, along the x-axis, you have 180 degrees of orientation, and if you look at time zero, there's really no preference for any one direction, but as you increase in time, the two solid lines, the red line and the blue line, are the two stiffer uh, substance, or substrates, you can start to see there's a preference uh, for that 90 degree orientation. Uh, and it does kind of seem to be a, a dose response. The softer the, the substrate, the less preference you have for that time point. Uh, we decided to go out 12 hours uh, because what they had shown on this on a one mega or sorry one megapascal substrate in eight hours there was complete re reorientation. So we thought 12 hours was enough, and I didn't analyze the data until I wasn't no longer in Germany. So um, even though it's still only about 60 or 50 percent at time. 0.12 hours, um, you can still see that there's a difference in the response. Those are all fibroblasts? Yes, all fibroblasts. Uh, and so, uh, again, looking at five different graphs all at once can kind of, kind of be overwhelming. So what, I'm gonna, what I did was I took out kind of the response region that I was interested in. So 15 degrees within that reorientation uh, response window. and. This shows it a little bit better. So by time, by stiffness, you can see there's a quicker response on the stiffer uh, substrate. So the red compared to the orange or any of the other colors for that matter. Uh, the, the next uh, data point I wanted to show you is just the, the actin stress fiber orientation. So um, in order to do this analysis, it was just a uh, image J macro, and it went through doing a fast Fourier transformation to kind of tease out where those actin stress fibers were, and then it would give me a mean orientation of the, the internal structures within the cell. And what I did then was I took that number and I correlated it with the orientation of the cell as a whole to kind of say that maybe the internal structures are driving that response because they're, the, those are what are sensing the, the strain itself. And as you can see, um, on all of, the, all, of, all of the substrates, over time, that correlation, these are just the R values, are increasing. So if you go from 0 to 12, all those numbers increase. And then if you go from 11 to 110, then you can also see that the correlation strengthens. So the relationship between the cell orientation and the internal structures is tighter on the stiffer substances. So just uh, kind of overarching conclusions that I drew from this information is that uh, cells spread varying, uh, they, the spread of the cells varies by the sub, substrate stiffness and uh, they have a greater capacity to sense that mechanical strain. So that's kind of a, a no-brainer. We thought that's what was going to happen and that's, that is exactly what happened. Uh, the cellular force avoidance reaction, which was the mechanical response that we were measuring, varied by substrate stiffness in accordance with our hypothesis. Um, there was a relationship between the whole cell and the actin stress fibers, and it was more strongly correlated on the, st the stiffer substrates. And then, um, this is kind of where I start reaching a little bit, but uh, this may have implications for signal mechanotransduction 
Um, and so when you're considering the mechanical microenvironment, um, this is something you need to take into consideration. The stiffness of the tissue, um, in addition to the exogenous strain that's placed on the tissue, whether it's shear stress, um, tension, compression, stuff like that. So as a muscle physiologist um, and a muscle physiologist that works with stem cells, uh, the mechanical environment's a very big component of our uh, of a big, very big signal in the cells that we uh, are studying. So the mesenchymal stem cell found within muscle tissue, the main focus of our lab is looking at how do these cells contribute to growth and repair. And um, I'm also in the kinesiology department, so I call it mechanical strain when, I, when I'm with you guys. And then when I go to the other meetings, I call it exercise. So exercise, mechanical strain. Uh, we know from some of our other work that that's an important signal for growth factor release for these cells. And that has the potential to influence uh, the growth and repair and adaptation for several different tissue types within skeletal muscle. And so uh, what's exciting about this project for me is now I have this PDMS cell culture system that mimics skeletal muscle microenvironments. And I can do a better job of kind of teasing out that mechanical microenvironment component and how that regulates um, cell behavior. And specifically, I work with um, looking at restoring or preventing the loss of skeletal muscle in aged individuals, um, which is something that everybody, unfortunately, has to deal with at some point in their life. So um, I'm excited about using this uh, new system in uh, my, my future work. So with that, I'll thank my lab, um, all the people at Max Planck, and uh, some of my engineering friends that uh, have reached out and helped me analyze the data, and my funding, uh, funding sources as well. Thanks. Good exercise. <laughs> okay, very nice talk, but I have a question. Uh, if you do observe the significant orientation at higher synthesis, right? Have you looked at the focal addition uh, in the, all the cases? Because I'm wondering if anywhere on the deeper subject, you will have more focal addition in the early scale. And if you think about outside the signaling, they provide probably the catalyst in the signaling hub, they will provide some cues. So I'm wondering if the increased response that you're seeing is because of the already higher focal addition per se because of the higher steepness. So uh, I could imagine that the better analysis maybe like if you know the focal additions on the uh, software to sticker gels and you normalize their focal addition area to their cell spreading area, mm -hmm. and then you quantify the orientation because you probably do see a little bit orientation on the software just as well. Right, yeah, and you can see that with the with the graphs as well. I'm just wondering like it's only because of the higher steepnesses uh, or it's because of the like, only because of the focal addition things that are uh, Right, yeah, I actually did a Paxilin stain, so I have those images. They didn't turn out as great as I had hoped, um, but I could look more into that. But I, I definitely ag agree that there's probably a tight relationship between the response and the focal adhesion, so. Thank you. Yeah, I don't really know how to explain that, so I left that out of the talk. But on the stiffer gels, you definitely saw greater deformation. So I would apply, um, I would give them 24 hours of, of attachment time, and then I would uh, just in real time do um, imaging of a relaxed substrate and then 8% deformation. And there was 23% greater deformation on the stiffer substance. Uh, sub, uh, wow, I can't say that word today. Substrates. Um, but I don't. I just don't know what that means. I don't know how to explain that. It makes, I don't know. I'm just going to stop with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I would say yes. And I would think that that, again, ties back to the first question, is that it's, it's how the cell is interacting with the substrate and how many focal adhesions are there. And yeah, I would definitely think that there would be. 
but in 10 weeks I couldn't pull off 3D. So. I have a question. Yes. So in Ralph's lab, uh, as far as I remember, the day before the special sequence special experiment was on PDMS. Yes. Uh, it was just the base. Correct. Yes. And, uh, and also uh, fiber glasses. Yep. So that's it, about one MTA that was. Uh, yes. How did that was compared to yours? Um, in eight hours, they would see complete reorientation. Mm -hmm. So is that similar to what you saw in high stiffness? Uh, I was seeing about 50% in 12 hours. So, but I mean, one MPA versus 110, I mean, you've got a nine-fold difference there. So if I'm doing the math right, please don't check me. <laughs> uh, now, in this time, together with the uh, Weizen Institute, it has done quite a bit of modeling uh, in understanding this rehabilitation of the cells, mm -hmm. where the stiffness of the subject was part of the was one of the Any thought on why the soft substrate was not playing as much of an active role? You scared me with modeling. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know okay. what to say to that. <laughs> Ask Ralph. Ask Ralph, yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, let's turn this to the again.